In this episode of Low Buck Garage, I drill a lot of holes. I make something out of a kid's book. It kind of looks like something Dr. Seuss would have drawn. And then this happens. And that looks just hideous. This is going to be an interesting weekend. It's Friday at around 8 a.m. My family's already gone off to do the work school thing. So I'm here all by myself. And as usual, I've overcommitted and I'm running late. So we're going to scramble a little bit to try to get this weekend to happen. Now, because of the time traveling nature of doing videos, I'm trying to get ready for the trip where I test out the folding electric stuff inside this bus. I haven't actually done that yet. But that video has already been released. So my current self doesn't know what that future self that you've seen in the past has done already. So wasn't that great? Or, wow, I really learned something from that, which everyone applies. That's gonna happen later. But now I need to make that happen. Just barely last night, I put that final electric vehicle in this bus and I now have to get the bus ready to go and take care of a few odds and ends before we actually leave to do that thing that happened in the past, tomorrow. Now the first thing I want to do is get more air into the engine compartment. It's got a little scoop, but I want to make it a lot bigger. There'll be a little more air resistance, but I'm already shoving a giant cucumber through the air at 60 miles an hour. Another leaf won't hurt. I don't think the wind resistance really matters. I don't want cool air more than anything. Now in my random bits of metal pile, I've got this old fireplace surround. That looks kind of plausible. Bit of water heater. Old fuel tank. There's some more seats. What else we got? Old swamp cooler sides. That might do. That's yeah, just about right. Got to break a pen. Now when I held this on the roof, I held a marker in my hand and put my hand against the roof and tried to hold it steady as I dragged it along. So hopefully that's all the same distance and when I cut this out, it'll actually fit the curve of the roof. Now I got the curve cut out except for one tab because I might want to use this tab to mount it to the roof. So I'm just going to fold it under. Now I got a mounting tab in place already. And now I realize that mounting tab interferes with me putting it flush with this existing scoop. So now I'm going to cut that one off too. I'm setting up the fingers in my brake to bend this and one of the screws stripped out. So let me fix that. There we go. Now one of the reasons I picked this piece of metal is these nice bent edges. That's going to add a lot of rigidity to the panel. And right on the corner, they made this in two separate bends, so there's a gap. So I'm going to run my bend right in the corner. Now that's going to leave this thing pretty tall. I think it's going to be as tall as the roof AC, but I might as well make it as tall as possible now, and then I can make it smaller later if I want to. Oh, we're starting to move. Oh, this is probably definitely past the limits what this thing's supposed to do. It took every hand I had, but we got it. I'm going to need a little more trimming here. But I think I pretty much have one side made. Now I just need to make one for the other side that of course is different because the bus curves this way too. So that side's going to be smaller. So I'm just going to copy what I have, knock off the few inches difference in the roof, and hope the curves all stay the same all the way across. To get the other side, we're going to flip this along the bend, like that. Now I have a really faint outline to follow, and then I'm going to slide the whole thing downwards three and a quarter inches, move this bend over, and hope it all works. Alright, so the new bend goes here, and we're just going to go parallel to that one. So this one would also go here. I made a new reef leaf cut and a flange on the side here so it can bend. Oh, there we go. It's moving. I think I might be pushing the rating of this thing. Oh well, it hasn't broken yet. There we go. Well, that copying works surprisingly well. There's only one spot where you have a little bit of touching, but really that's no big deal. 
got this triangular gap here, right where my shadow is. So now I'm working on a cover piece to cover that up. This is another pre-bent piece. I'm gonna try to lock all the bends together so that it all sort of jigsaws in place. Getting there. Now I have to make the brace that holds the front end down. I'm gonna put it in a random set of holes to go to the roof with. That should be plenty. Hopefully those angles are pretty close. I know it wasn't square. Well, the angles were close enough. I drilled holes for 10 of these. That should be good. And there we have it. Giant piles of air are gonna go into that engine compartment. And this thing is super sturdy. I think we're gonna be good. At first I thought that was gonna look absolutely hideous with the giant opening, but then I realized it kind of looks like something Dr. Seuss would have drawn. Being just so absurdly oversized, it's funny. So now I kind of like it. The scoop's done, which is one of my main things, and it is now past 11. I got a lot more to do here, but it's been pretty sunny and hot, and my shade is going away. So I'm going to switch gears for a little while. You guys have been doing a fantastic job on doing the liking and subscribing and putting up with those stupid unskippable ads. And I really appreciate that because that's helped me spend a lot more time doing stuff like this. But I still got to work on some other customer stuff. I got some parts I got to deliver today and I got to go finish them. So I'm going to do that for a little while inside. And then when the sun moves over and gives me some shade, I'll finish up on the side of the bus. Now my customer parts are done and delivered, but they give me a whole nother pile of parts to work on. I don't have to deal with those till next week though. It's a little after two o'clock. So I'm gonna unload these, eat a little bit, and then get back on that. Now it's time to do the intro for that episode that's gonna happen in the future that you already saw. I've still gotta fix that gaping hole in the side. So I'm gonna stand in front of it and hope no one notices. Don't tell anyone. In this episode of Low Buck Garage, I stuffed two electric vehicles inside this bus. And there's my phone getting a text message. I got a motorcycle coming, I can hear it. There it goes. Motorcycle with radio blaring. Truck. Oh, school bus. Dusting off some of my old camping gear. It's not a very elaborate system, but at least this will be able to achieve meat on fire. And that is important to me. A lot of these rivets have corroded completely off and that top bar wasn't really attached. And these aren't particularly well attached either. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill out these old rivets and put new ones in. Yeah, just pull them right out. That's handy. Don't even need to drill. That's better already. Now this is done. My family got home, we had dinner. It's now almost six o'clock. So we're running a little bit behind schedule. Not too bad. But I did find the drop from that floor. That's the exact right size. Now eventually I want to make a nice door for this, but I don't need one right now. I'm thinking I'm just going to pop this thing on there and then deal with making a nice one later. Good enough for this weekend. Hideously ugly. I have these adjustable fan controllers and they worked, but I wish they kicked on a little sooner. But they're adjustable, so I'm going to adjust them. I'm just going to go one turn on each of them. One half in one turn. Now I just remembered I only snug up those bolts when I set these rails in because I didn't want to lift them up. But now I have the rails bolted down, I probably should tighten those up. I'm supposed to have another battery there, but I'm putting a wood block in its place because the battery I need is still in this and I can't take it out yet because I need to use this to trim that tree. And I don't have time to do it now, so we're just gonna ignore it. I'll get to this next week, probably. Now I've never been sure whether air is going in or out of this engine cover vent, so I am gonna find out with this. We're gonna check the speed and see what direction it's going. There we go. Counterclockwise means the air is going in. Clockwise would mean the air is coming out. I expect that that vent is gonna be exiting air and I don't want that. So I'm gonna pre-cut myself a block off plate so I can block it off if I get that result. If not, I have a piece of cut aluminum lying around, which I'll use eventually. 
Now this grate is just held in by four bolts on each corner. So all I have to do is take those out and put my plate in place and it'll all be blocked off. Those bolts are at an angle, it's gonna be hard to measure. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna drill the holes in this, but I will bring a quarter inch drill bit and a cordless drill so I can just match drill it to whatever's there if I need to replace this. Now it's one thing to have that meter where I want it, but we can't see it unless I put a camera there. So now I gotta make a camera mount. That should work. Going right to the hitch receiver. And I think with this U-bolt on here, should be sturdy enough to see what we're doing. At least I shouldn't lose the camera. That's always important. Those are not cheap, even used. I think something like this will work. I hate touch screens. No, that's not too bad. It is now almost eight o'clock. We're around 12 hours when we started this day. I think we're pretty much ready to go. Now that I have all the electronics in the back to check the wind speed, we've got a storm coming in. And the sun is set. Now I don't know why this just occurred to me now, but I'm glad it did. And this scooter uses a key, which I left in the ignition, pointing down. So that could have fallen out at any time, fell into the road, and I never would have had the key. That's going in here. The other stuff I have to put away. I just remembered I forgot to make a battery tie down for these house batteries. I was planning on adding the third battery, then doing it. We're going with the ratchet strap. Realized I had nowhere to attach the ratchet strap, so I need to make an attachment point. So I might as well start making the actual battery tie down and use that as an attachment point. I've got that section of the battery tie down made. I actually ran it through the loop of the ratchet strap, so I'm not even using the hook. That's not going anywhere. And that's tied down back there somewhere. And these things are secure. One more thing. Why doesn't that close? I was about to say one more thing done. I guess it doesn't really close. Well, I'm just gonna completely ignore that. So we're calling that done. I'm running out of daylight. And I'm reaching the point that if I keep doing this too much longer, it might stop being fun. And if I'm not having fun, I'm doing it wrong. Which means I need to change the way I'm doing it. I'm just calling it a night. I'm gonna bag up this meter, just in case it does rain a little more. Sprinkle a little, not too bad. And we're just taking this camera in. I'll remount it in the morning. We'll try again then. It's still only Friday night. I got Saturday and Sunday too. It's about 6.30 Saturday morning. Last night I thought of a few things that I forgot to do, like fix this flappy mud flap. It's this entire back piece of sheet metal that's making that mud flap flap. All I have to do to fix it is run a bolt through that hole. So I just made this door in the first place. The bolt has to go right there in that space that doesn't have any metal. So made up a little plate that will cover up that entire rib, get the good metal on both sides. There. Fixed. We're solid now. It's now just after 9 o'clock and we're finally rolling. I pulled over a few miles down the road, want to check the camera here and see which way that's spinning. So I know whether or not to block this off. I've been watching this for a while and it's kind of surprising. It's not consistent. The air starts coming out, then goes the other way, then goes the other way again. Changes direction, maybe. This is all at normal driving speed. Oh, stopped again. Oh, now we're going fast, two miles an hour. And almost three. Then a complete stop in the other direction. There's not a whole lot of airflow going through there, but when there is, it generally is coming out. So I'm gonna go ahead and block it off anyway. Panel up. Looks about right from under here. Just a matter of tightening them down. Let's see how I did. That's well, reasonably square. Good enough. Time to pick up my stuff and get back on the road.
We're climbing hills again, headed into those mountains. We're keeping up with traffic. The temperature's not too bad. It's staying reasonable. Been holding 50 some odd miles an hour this whole hill. Temperature's looking fine. We're going at not too bad of a clip. A lot more hills. Temperature's creeping up. We're at 7,500 feet elevation now. The priority here is do some camping first. Well, the grill's gonna come in handy because we just caught lunch. It's almost stopped steaming, so it's gotta be done. Then I got around to doing some of the testing I was supposed to do. Been caught in a little bit of a rainstorm. Look, they brought spare shirts because uh, I got pretty soaked on that ride. But, oh well, it's good now. All right, where were we? Now I'm doing my morning underhood fluids check. And when I was trimming that scoop, I had one little shard of metal that fell in and I didn't get it, I couldn't fish it out. I just found it. Right there. It fell all the way from that hole down and landed exactly in this hole to be saved and not fall on the road. Now the engine got a little hotter than I want and I never hit that fourth stage of cooling fan. So I want to lower the temperature of one controller. Problem is, I don't remember which one. I've got the two and I didn't label them. So I'm going to trigger the air conditioning wire and see which one turns on, then I can figure it out. Just a little piece of jumper wire here. All right, now my wife was watching, so she'll have to remember which one turned on. This is the controller I need to adjust. Maybe I'll give it a little extra for luck. All right, now we'll see how that works. Put in this voltmeter with a switch. It keeps dying on me. It won't turn on, and that means I lose my USB for my speedometer. Luckily, I put one without a switch over here. So now we got the speedometer going again. Now I've done the electric vehicle test, and I did that in the rain. It's a beautiful day out, and uh, it was perfect for doing what I did yesterday. But it's also perfect for driving. So I'm just going to enjoy the scenery. We've just climbed a thousand feet in altitude. The fans haven't kicked on high yet. They've only been on and off on low. At this point I'm starting to wonder what went wrong because they should have kicked on to high by now. And that's the summit right there. We made it without fans kicking on high. And now it's downhill. Out of the mountains, headed toward the desert again. Now that we're at a higher speed section of the road, I've been doing somewhere around 60. Temperature is still pretty good. Uh, so the scoop's got to be doing something useful. We've got a good cooling system test coming up. We're starting the climb into the mountains, going around 54, 55 miles an hour. We're about a mile into the climb. Both cooling fans are on low. Two miles into the climb, down to 46, and one cooling fan on high, one on low. Down to a little over 40. Both cooling fans on high, and we're running pretty hot. I'm going to start slowing down some more. I have a little more of the pass to go, but I saw a good pull-off spot. We've been stopped for about 10 seconds. Already the temperature's dropping with those fans both on. So it'll be cool in no time. We've been parked for about three minutes or so. Temperature's already all the way down. We're ready to roll. Away we go. We hit all the way up again, but we're at the top of the hill. And there we go, we made it. It's all downhill from here. We're now back. It's Sunday mid afternoon. Gotta clean out the bus, get all the food out, get all the sheets out, dirty clothes, all the miscellaneous stuff that happens. So that's this evening's plan. Now I have some thoughts on the cooling system. I'm gonna poke at it a little bit and see what I can figure out. I might be able to solve it. But for now, I'm not gonna think about it. I'm gonna unload, clean up, call it a night. This one's been bugging me. The engine's getting hot, but the radiator isn't necessarily getting hot. The gauge for the coolant is in the engine. The sensor for the fan is in the radiator. So immediately I thought of coolant flow. So I started looking at that. And then I remembered driving in the winter with the coolant going into the heater instead of the radiator. And then I remembered this valve that turns off that coolant. So what I'm going to do is turn this valve to close it. I can't believe I didn't think of doing this before. 
There. Now we're going to have all the coolant going into the radiator. Won't make that mistake again. Now I asked Brian at Delta Current Controls to make sure those really did have a 10 degree differential between high and low. And he mentioned the sensors might not be reading the right temperature. Now these are on the engine side, which normally is the hot side of the radiator, but the air goes in this way on this one. So those sensors are getting nice fresh air blown at them that is keeping this side of the radiator cooler than the other side where it's going out. So I'm gonna move these sensors. This is a cover plate I made to connect the plenum area. Glad I made this unboltable. I've got some high temperature silicone tapered plugs I use for powder coating. I got my sensors tucked up right against the upper tank, old vacuum connector, I uh, slid it and put the wires in there. Then the cover is going to go right on top and hold that right in that corner so they shouldn't go anywhere. And there we go. Barely can even see them. You know, it's kind of weird. Neither my wife nor my kids volunteer for dump tape duties. I don't know what reason they could possibly have for that. Probably should have put some kind of support under this. Hindsight. First time I ever dumped the tank on this one. We're just going to sit here and let this fully drain out to make sure it doesn't drip when I pull that out. I realized that yesterday, for the first time in over two months, I didn't actually work on that bus. Before that, it was every single day, weekends, evenings, all that. It turned out to be a lot bigger project than I expected. I needed to get some of my customers' work done, so I got to knock out some different parts and taking a break from the bus for a little bit. Got the customers' parts done and delivered and managed to get a haircut. But now, I have to deal with the mess I made of the shop. I spent a few days catching up on stuff, and now it's the weekend and I'm working on the bus again. A couple things are really bugging me. One is this panel. I don't mind doing, uh, let's call it substandard work. I generally try to make things better, even if it's just a little bit. This is not better. This is worse. I gotta do something about this. Now to put something different here. Looks like they drilled the holes for the rivets and missed the brace that they're intending to hit. I can actually trim up to this line and then drill new holes and re-rivet it. That would fit, but somehow a clear door doesn't seem like a good idea. Oh. Found a sheet of aluminum that I'd used for an old job years ago. Oh, right up about there. Looks like I could cut out a square that'll do with the size I want. Picked up some hinge from the hardware store and trimmed it to the closest hole length of what I needed. Now, interestingly, this is stainless steel. I didn't intend to buy stainless steel, but look at the hinges I had. This stainless steel one was a lot thicker than the regular steel ones I had. It was a noticeably heavier gauge. It wasn't that much more expensive. I'm just going to use the hinge I already cut to size what size piece I need. So you definitely want earplugs for something like this. There we go. Since this is a flat sheet, I'm going to add a bead to the edge to uh, give it a little more rigidity. It's way thicker than I'm supposed to be able to work with. Apparently when you use metal that's too thick, the machine bends. I clamped on a piece of square tubing to make it better. Well, that went really poorly. I'll see what I can do with this. It's better than it was. Now, this is a battery compartment, and I really don't like the way this door latches. It's uh, floppy. So I'm gonna steal that lock, which matches the keys and the rest of this, for my new door. As I was stealing the latch out of this door, I realized how much air was coming out of my engine compartment here. So I put this cardboard behind it to stop any excess airflow coming out and save as much as I can in the engine compartment. We'll see if that helps too. Now I'm going to add a precision latching system. There, nice and secure. Oh, that works. Not great but better than it was. These are my old rivet holes. You can see how far they missed the brace. These holes over here are actually in the brace. So now, when I re-rivet it, it'll actually hold together. All rivets that are actually in the brace 
and a door to cover the whole mess up. Got some nice new retractable belts for this. That way we don't have the solid ones lying around on the floor. So I'm gonna pop those in here. That's better. And then they just disappear out of the way. After the changes I made to the cooling system, I had to do another test. So we're testing it right now. The fans turn on way too early now. Luckily that's adjustable, so I'm gonna have to turn them down a little bit, or up, temperature-wise. Either way, I gotta adjust them. Now I already adjusted these controllers to make them turn on sooner. Right now I'm about to adjust them back to where they were when I got them. So I had the sensors in the wrong spot, they would've worked better if I put them on the correct side of the radiator. So always put them on the hot side of the radiator, wherever the hot air is coming out. One half, one, one and a half, two. So that should be seven degrees difference. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna go over that same mountain pass that I had trouble with before. So we'll really test it now. Headed back up. We'll check our set points here. There's the first stage. Second stage. There's the first one going to high. There's the next one. So that's where all our starting points are. Now let's make this hill. I've been on the hot throttle pretty heavily this whole time and it's increasing, but we'll see how it goes. That is the hottest I've ever seen the transmission, but it's still in the green range, so I think we're good. And the temperature's holding steady, but we're still going up. That's getting pretty warm. So temperature's 210, transmission's almost in the yellow. No matter what, I'm slowing down on this hill anyway because I don't want to cook the transmission. Well, I backed down to about 35 with my hazard lights on. You could hear them beeping. They have a slow vehicle lane just because everyone goes slow on this hill. Transmission's back well into the green. And the temperature is actually dropping. It's below 210 now. Nice scenery too. I think what we've achieved is a balanced system where the engine and transmission cooling capacity match. And if they both get hot, I just slow down but we're still rolling along. He's not even pulling away. We're definitely keeping up with traffic. We're at the peak right now. Temperature climbed up on the transmission. Engine's about as hot as I want, but the hill's over. Letting off of the pedal, and we're gonna coast down and let everything cool down. Don't even need my hazard lights anymore. Well, I'm up way up in the air trimming this tree, and I noticed something really disheartening. See the spot around the air conditioner that's brown? That's what I painted with that nice white roof coating. Apparently, it doesn't stay white, it turns brown. Let's take a look at what happened. It appears the fine dust around here just sticks like crazy to that stuff. Possibly a static charge makes it stick to it. And that looks just hideous. I do not want the roof of the bus looking like that all the time. And I don't want to have to clean it all the time. My entire roof plan was this coating and I don't want to use it now. I spent a ton of money on that roof coating and paint to go over the entire bus. Now I'm literally putting anything on there after that one turned brown. So I just hit a wall with this project. This next week was supposed to be painting the outside of that bus. Now this bus has taken over my life for a couple months now and I didn't mind that because everyone in my family enjoyed it. So my parents were really enjoying seeing it get back on the road. And my kids had a blast taking trips in it. We've had a lot of fun. And right now it's ready to go. Mechanically and interior wise, where we can just hop in it and live in it. And it's comfortable inside. It drives wherever you want. I'm real happy with where we're at. It's just a matter of making it look better on the outside. And that's where I'm hitting the wall. So I got to take a break. It's still usable. We're still going to do some stuff with it but I am not gonna continue on redoing the outside until I get a good plan. Which means that's the end of this project for now. You will see it again, but not in the next video. I got a bunch of stuff lined up for the next few videos. It's gonna be interesting and a lot of fun. I hope you guys are having fun too, and we'll see you next time. Now I gotta find a place to park this thing. Thank you.